So welcome guys with another reaction with the Tristan Tate Rob Moore interview with second part. I hope you enjoy the first part. Uh, it was really interesting. We're gonna see the second part how what's hiding is in the story in the video. Uh, before we dive into the video, guys, like usual, I need, need to speak about the store that I was designing. I will leave you the video what they have in the store. As you see and as you saw now uh, you can purchase anything from there uh, there uh, there is cool design there guys uh, uh, when you purchase is a support for us for me to be able to buy a camera because my original uh, phone is lagging so it's hard for me to do and this is the first time I think maybe this is the first time I ask for it so that's why I'm telling you purchase something or I don't know you can donate uh, by super thanks and then a super thank with a suggestion I will do it in the same time this this uh, amount of money goes to buying a camera to be able to do more reaction and uh, yeah make sure to subscribe and see us grow and one day why not so let's just check the video and see what's going on guys understanding of how things work and how money's made mm. So I did a, a, a live rant saying that ADHD doesn't exist and I got fucking slammed for it. Oh, I bet you did. Yeah. Do you think ADHD is a real thing or do you think it's somewhat created by a big pharma for profit? Hmm. Do I want to get assassinated today? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, you're right. right. It was his idea. He said it first. <laughs> no, no, I think that... No, we'll just cut me out and put you on the shore <laughs> for TikTok. <laughs> Oh, it probably will happen. Um, look, human behaviors and human emotionality, uh, emotionalities and human energy levels are on a massive spectrum, an absolutely massive spectrum. You could say someone like me is far less emotional than the type of person who cries at sad romantic comedies. Of course, yeah, so that, that's a spectrum. Uh, what I don't like is when do you take this natural variation in humans and start saying it's a disease? For example, I'm a loving, feeling person. Love my mom, love my brother. Haven't cried in my adult life. Maybe once. But let's just say you take me, yes? And you make someone who's a little bit less emotional, a little bit more stoic than me. Psychopath, sociopath. Whoa, 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 whoa. When do you, st when do you or anyone on this spectrum, as all of us humans are, get to start naming people's different normal states as diseases? ADHD is one. ADHD. Some people are can be more focused than other people. Let's, let's break it down. Yeah, that's, Some people have more that's energy that. than other people. When do you get to this scale and be like, okay, that kid is, you know, super energetic, wants to be up all the time, can't focus as well as this kid, uh, but here, that's now that's now a disease, and we need to start giving them drugs. I don't like any of that. Any kind of emotional disease. So again someone's super emotional take the woman who i was talking about who cries at romantic comedy movies let's get someone a little bit more emotional than her who cries at sad thoughts of things that happen okay manic depressive it really worries me because it's very normal it's not like all humans have two legs if you have one leg you're an amputee if you have three legs you have a deformity that's math and that's science and that's true and some people do have one leg and i guess there probably are some people with three legs out there you either are an amputee something's gone wrong or you have a deformity. The brain doesn't work that way. The brain isn't simple that way. So I'm sick of big pharmaceutical companies and doctors looking at the natural variation in humans and drawing these weird lines where this is a disease that needs that drug, this is a disease that needs that drug, and trying to keep everyone within this little box. You know, it really upsets me. And the super emotional people, I've been called a psychopath before. Oh, you're a psychopath because, you know, uh, I was in jail and I didn't care. And I just, Stoic about it, didn't give a shit, I was in jail. Oh, psychopath, you, you can't feel emotions. Well, I actually can. Maybe not as well as you, I don't know what it's like to have your brain, but don't start labeling me as somebody who's sick and somebody who needs pills. Mm. So to answer your question in short, I know that was a very comprehensive answer, ADHD is bullshit. Mm. I was talking to 
I was talking to Will I Am, yeah. and he said that really it's just bad teaching. All these kids with ADHD, it's just bad teachers who can't keep their attention because the f***ing computer game can keep their attention exactly. for a week. That is a very good point. Well done to Will I Am. Mm. Yeah, you're right. They're, they'll sit on a computer game for eight hours. So they haven't got attention yeah. deficit disorder. They've got a lack of respect for authority yeah. and parenting, and they've probably got bad, boring uh, teachers. Mm. Yeah. I remember my science teacher to this day, Mr. Subasing. I don't know, I don't know where he was from, probably Indonesia or something he looked like. But very interesting teacher. Kept, yeah. the, kept the lessons fun. Science was my favorite topic. Why? Did I go on to be a scientist? No. Went on to be a businessman. Why was business not my favorite to topic? Because Mr. Subasing was super entertaining and super interesting and made the lessons fun. So yeah, you're completely right. Mm. Mm. All right. Is happiness the purpose? Yeah, because that's, that's the triggering thing that people doesn't understand. That most of the people understand, but you know when the teacher uh, growing up, we all hate school growing up. Uh, that's uh, something obviously we all uh, hate school growing up because why? We had teachers that they wasn't funny and they was hit, especially when when you when you studying in Algeria, the, the teacher allow he can hit you. You know, I've been hit for so from the teacher. I've been hit. For, I remember there is one woman. She hit me like she punched me like uh, four or five times uh, in my face. Like four or five, I have all blanches and shit like that. They, they was really allowed to to hit. I don't know, uh, but I never told the story to my mom or to my father. I was so scared. I I don't know why I didn't tell the story to my mom or to my father. But uh, I never said this. I've been him hitting by l all my life. I've been hitting in primary school when I was six years old, seven. No, six, no, I'd never been hit in six, seven, eight, nine, okay, uh, till third grade, in primary school, like one, two, three, so from six years old it goes, so eight, nine, I start, they start getting hit you with the, with the, you know, with the, I don't know how it's called it, but it's like a gas thing you use with the gas, it, we, in French we call it tuyo, you know, <laughs> I don't know how you call it in English, but yeah, I've been hitting with that, uh, when I passed to the middle school, like I said, a lot, the teacher sometimes he hits you with you know I, I forget the shape of how it's a triangle you know what they make the mathematic with it the triangle he hit it oh, la, la, it was crazy there was a lot to hit anyway but uh, now in these days no no one can touch you if you touch you you can sue them but back in the days when i was growing up in algeria they they hit me i told you the teacher hit me four times they start having blanches she broke my tooth yeah it was all fucked up i don't know i was a kid is a bit that's why we hate teachers you cannot tell me like uh, growing up I will lo lo love teachers be love being a teacher so I hate teachers so we had that kind of feel they give you that kind of feeling but there is a lot there is a lot of good teacher also they make the things funny I hate studying Spanish and I was studying languages I hate studying Spanish but when I changed the school I started loving studying Spanish because just the teacher, she was really nice and she was funny and she kept the, the lesson goes in a funny way, entertaining. it. That's why I, I like to study Spanish. I, I liked it to study in Spanish back in the days. Yeah. So, yeah. To his answer, yeah, it's true. That's a lie. No. 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 Happiness is the purpose of life. If you want it to be, if you want to have a happy life, you know, go ahead and do it. But I don't think chasing happiness is going to lead to anywhere positive. Yeah, happiness chasing is success. Is, happiness is the purpose of life, but not for yourself. Let me make sure that my children are happy. Let me make sure my mother is happy. Let me make sure who comes into my life is happy. Let me even, because men don't have each other's backs these days, make my friends, my male friends, as happy as I can with my friendship and my companionship but nothing about my quest you know about friend not having back like this society these days this is true uh, ah you know you think you know the friend for more than eight years ten years and then the first things that they kept to their mind yeah because you know when you travel you know in Nigeria we say you don't know your friend till you travel with him so you travel and then you start knowing your friend who have your back and who doesn't have your back Especially when it comes to hard situation, yeah. So, you know, the, the first things we I thought I know if you you know him for ten years, and the first thing that it came up at like one sec, probably uh, now it means nothing what I'm about to say. But in the future, if I'm if I become in like uh, with a lot of followers and my video is gonna start uh, going through like this and like this, probably he's gonna hear it anyway. 
so I'm saying it now for later to for him to hear it so yeah you know the first thing that it came up and he turned your back he turned his back to you directly because it is it was his first attention and it was his opportunity to take it and if he doesn't take it we will be to both of us screw up and me choosing the path of being both of us screw up and going in the same path rather than just letting him screw up and going by my own path and that was uh, the stupid things i've done i thought uh, I, it would better if to think about myself but anyway you cannot know the person till you travel with him and traveling with him wasn't i it made me take another path because i could let him being screwed wherever it was the situation and they could just take another path but no I choose the, the, the path to being together and uh, staying together like because we don't know what's the, uh, the, what is going on in the future and the anonymous and having our back so I thought that we are having our back but uh, all the way along it was just me having his back not the all around the way so that's why I say if you want to trust someone trust your brother because your brother will never screw you up coming up from the same place you know go getting coming to this earth from the same place it's not like you just you met with a girl, with another guy in school it's not the same guys don't make that mistake your brother is your blood and you have the only thing you have is your brother but i would say also i have my cousin my cousin have my back all the time if i if i need money right now if for example okay I, I will say like i'm trying to do my things by myself but when things hit you in the in 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 the down you know when you are really down and things hit you really hard life hit you really hard i can call my cousin and say like i need the money but as much as he can give me he cannot give me what I, how much i need because he also he's also not in the same in uh, our country he's also left the country so we both left the country and we love we're both trying to make our living so it's really hard for both of us anyway so i understand that's why i cannot ask him i'm just saying he my cousin have my back and i have his back that's all i'm Her saying have your brother is about i guess personal happiness and basically i know it's out of contest but uh what he's speaking they speaking about happiness and uh, yeah i know i was speaking because it just came up to my mind i said okay i will i need to deliver it anyway i need to say it because i like to share my opinion but when it comes to happiness like uh, chasing happiness is wrong I, I would not say wrong because the happiness is an emotion and an emotion gonna last only one five some min five minutes maximum when you are happy you say some stuff and stuff like that you saw yourself when you are happy but chasing happiness it doesn't exist uh, it's, it's rather chasing success and be disciplined and uh, being faithful and be religious i believe that's what's going to make you happy and not just i don't know how you should, you should, you're going to chase happiness i don't know because for me happiness is when you make your mom retire from work and your father retire from work and they have it everything they wanted to give you but they couldn't give you but they give you everything they had so you want to give them back even though you you know that you cannot give them back what they want but at least you can give them some if that so makes I sense do the things I like to do. that's I like my to happiness from I do these things because they entertain me but I don't wake up every day trying to be happy and I'm sure my brother's made the exact point I'm going to make so I won't repeat himself I won't repeat him I wasn't even here for the podcast but he's probably made a point about Chase being proud every morning Wake up every morning and think, how can I make myself proud of myself today? I've trained twice today already, and I've, and I've got here at 3 p.m. You know, I'm proud of myself. Did it make me happy running on that treadmill for an hour? No, yes. it was horrible. So nope. I don't think happiness is the purpose of life for men. I think men should be trying to make everyone else happy. Mm -hmm. We are, it's very ironic, actually, that they'll call old-fashioned men like me who want to provide for their women and not maybe have their woman have a job and provide for his family in the traditional way. They'll say like, oh, you just want your woman to be a slave for you. Okay, she might make a few sandwiches. Okay, she might cook a few meals. She might change a few diapers. But if I'm working 18 hour days, seven days a week, I am the slave. I am the one, <laughs> I, am, I am the slave she in this situation. Yeah. I serve people. That's what I do. The people in my life, I serve them. And by exchange, you know, you, 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 they serve you back. You know, your daughter can make you happy, your wife can make you happy, girlfriend, mother, they can make you happy too. And just seeing the smiles on their faces is often enough. Yeah, that's enough.
It's often when you see, yeah, it's, 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 it's really sad. That, well said. What's the thing that's hurt you the most? Oh, my father dying, obviously. That's that's a question I didn't even have to think about. He died seven and a half, eight years ago now. So, Andrew said to me, I think it was off air. He said, "You're not a man until your father has died." It triggered me a bit because my dad hasn't died, and I think I'm a man, not just biologically. Mm -hmm. I think I tick some boxes. Yeah, you know, I'm sure beyond just the yeah. biological. I wouldn't be sitting here if you weren't. So. Yeah. But it did really get me to think, because my dad just turned 80 and he's been f***ing ill for so many years and he's mm -hmm. defied all the odds. So, but I know, l like, I'm not here being interviewed, but the scariest thought for me is the day my dad goes. That just yeah. scares the s*** out of me. Well, unfortunately, unfortunately, and I'm not trying to upset you, when you said, oh, because my dad hasn't died, you mean he hasn't died yet. And the natural order of humanity is that he will die before you. So it is going to happen, sadly. That's just an unfortunate fact of life. You say the same thing about my mother. Well, it should be the order of life. It some, should be. It some should people be. lose when, their and, children. And yeah. when it's not, when the natural order goes in the wrong direction, that is a real tragedy. Being your age and losing your 18-year-old father is sad, but it's not a tragedy. Being your age and losing your 18-year-old son mm. is a tragedy because it's someone crying about their problems. Why do you always give me the hardest battles? And Jesus is like, listen, just turn off the TV and go outside. I saw one where there was like some psychotic weirdo with crazy hair saying, give me harder battles. And Jesus Christ is like, Jesus, what the fuck's wrong with you? And that made me laugh. And it kind of reminds me of me. And I brag. And it, people who watch this, you can, you can take it or leave it. I don't care if you believe me. And people will be like, yeah, Tristan, maybe I'm putting on a tough guy act. You don't get to where I get to. And you don't go through the things I went through and maintain this position unless you are incredibly strong. I've never been anywhere close to breaking point. Ever, never. Ever. Nothing. Nothing. I can't think of a single time. So is that something that was born in you or it was, it was how you were raised? I think it's a combination of both. Ooh. It's a combination of both. I could have been raised in a much softer way. I could have, I don't know, taken up professional snooker instead of professional kickboxing. I feel like that certainly added a lot to it. Yeah. So I, I don't really know, but that is how I am. I can't think of a single time I've been anywhere near breaking point. Not in jail? You know, it's like a breaking point is it's, it's triggering a little bit, like uh, to not reach your breaking point. Uh, I, I don't understand, like this one triggered me really, uh, this question triggered me like, ah, uh, I cannot be in my breaking point. Like you cannot be break, I understand, uh, you don't allow anything to break you, but uh, you can reach that level of breaking point. Like you see that everything, like you, you see yourself vulnerable. You cannot, in that moment, I'm speaking in that minute, you see like there is nothing I can do in this situation. I don't know what to do, like really. But I think that's just temporarily, like that's the breaking point um, I reach. Uh, I want, uh, especially when the war started in Ukraine and they left. You know, uh, when I went to Spain, when I went to Spain, it's like I went to Spain knowing, n don't know where I'm going. I just took the bus. I just bought a ticket and I went. I threw, went through Poland and then I took a ticket and I went uh, to Spain. I didn't know where I am going. Didn't know what to do. Didn't know how, what is going to happen. But in all cases, I had hope in Allah. I had faith and I had hope and I said it's already written so what's the point of me struggling um, what's the point of me being upset about something is already written I just need to pray and hoping for the best that can happen yeah so I went to Spain and with my luggage it was fucking hot I was in the fucking snow and they went it was cold there and they went it was hot because yeah but when I left I, when I slept uh, I remember in the road I walked for 50, 50 kilometers, I walked for 50 kilometers and I had only my backpack and it was super cold, I slept, I didn't eat the, I didn't eat for 3-4 days, I slept outside, I eat from times like just a little bit snacks and stuff like this when I can, when I be able to find uh, the money that I had, I had few, I didn't have much, I had few, so you, you can, you do what you can best to do, to survive anyway. It was, it was scary, to be honest with you, it was scary. It was struggling. It was scary a little bit for me. Then, and I, as I'm saying, like when I left, this is just a short story I'm giving you. I didn't give you all the details. I'm giving a short story. 
when I went to Spain with my luggage, didn't know where to go. I went to Barcelona. I didn't know where to go, what to do, anything. Like I was just walking with my luggage. It was hot and I was just walking with my luggage. Don't know anything. And then, who have you back? Of course, your father. That's what I'm saying. Family is always in the first place. I called my father. I said, look, okay, I, I, I was reaching my breaking point because I don't know nothing. I called my father. I said, look, look, I have no battery. I said, literally, I have no battery and I need to... I need to, if you know someone in Spain, please, because I, I know nothing. I was trying to eat for days. I don't know what to do. I was struggling, luggage, shit like this. That, that, that. So my father called a friend, and that friend was in Spain. By my luck, he was really in Spain. And so he sent me his wife. Oh, his wife really taking care, take care of me. And I, I really thank her for everything. You know, you never know. One day I could... If I have the ability and the money to pay her back, I will do it because she really helped me in my when I was in the, my the darkest moments and especially in the breaking point. She really helped me with the food, with the money, with it. so yeah. That's what I'm saying. Every door closing in front of you, another door open, and that's the faith that I had in Allah, and He kept me going. So and the family key and the family also keep you going. So but anyway, you have to understand the struggle came from this kind of situation, but the struggle take you to a place because you you cannot be someone without without struggling. That's what my father been saying. I know it's out of context, but I just needed to get it out of. Uh, this is just a short story of what happened. I'm not saying everything. No, just a quick near. story. Nowhere near. In fact, in jail, I was laugh I laughed more in jail than I was laughing here. Yeah, Hilarious. Terrible. Human trafficking. Now it's just becoming a funny story. You want a cigarette? For me. Especially when I was put in the same room with him. He was hilarious. Like, I, I don't know I shouldn't say that. But imagine, like. okay, I, I assume you're not a human trafficker, right? You are okay. correct in right. your assumption. Wonderful. Yeah. Great. Imagine one day you're sitting there with your best mate in jail, accused of human trafficking, and the news keeps calling you a human trafficker. Like, you could cry about it if you want, but also it, it, it was kind of hilarious. <laughs> like if I was a real human trafficker, I'd be like, they're on to me. I was laughing daily. I found it hilarious. Uh, talk about breaking point. Nowhere bloody near. Nowhere near. Oh, breaking point, no, <laughs> man. <laughs> you reach it. Yeah. That's, that's what I believe. He reached it, but he didn't let it go. It's just fuck it. It's not. Hey, that's why he doesn't see it as a breaking point, because he reached it, but he doesn't get it. Nearest to the apocalypse we're getting. Or the biggest opportunity maybe in the world ever certainly since the internet nuclear weapons have changed the game obviously but besides that i'm a big history buff i love history you have to understand that it's very ignorant to be because right now we live in a very special time you know why the time is special because it's happening right now but in 500 years this time may or may not be relevant or special at all and we're just part of this well it, in a million story. years it won't be relevant it won't be at all, all. Yeah. and we're, if humans are around at all so yeah. we're part of this amazing story that currently this chapter is being told but what you have to assume is and what you have to think is how many people throughout the 6,000 or whatever years of recorded history that we have in the world thought the world was ending and not just thought the world was ending for how many people did the world in fact end you're Constantine the 11th, and you're in the city of Constantinople in 1453. Someone's going to correct me if it's not 1453. The Ottomans have completely surrounded you. You ask for help from every Christian kingdom in Europe, and you are told no. The world's ending, right? And then the world ended. They all got murdered. They died. The world did, in fact, end for the Byzantine Empire. That's the world over. The sacking of Rome. When you're British and you think Napoleon's fleet is going to invade the UK and kill you and your women and kids and just take over, and England's over, and it's going to be France from now on. The world's ending, right? So when you look at history, you think, how many times have people, one, thought the world was ending, and two, also been correct? Because worlds, worlds have ended, mm. you know? Ways of life, empires, mm. worlds have ended many times. The only thing about this scary time is the world could, in fact, end. Nuclear weapons could wipe most people out. But then most people, okay, let's say you live in Rarotonga, in the Cook Islands, in the middle of the South Pacific. Will there still be fish? Maybe. Catch a few fish, you live a few thousand years, the sky clears up, you start agriculture again. Like, it's, it's, it's tricky. Mm. Civilization could end. A solar flare could wipe out all electronics. I don't know, but I don't feel we're any closer to the world okay, ending. Those, uh, than question, uh, the question I'm not interested in to hear before. them, to be honest mm. with you. Because 
you can ask people for, yeah. Yeah. there is some question yeah, yeah. i would just want to pop up like oh, okay those people back in 2024 these two countries were america and russia who have nuclear weapons were but he's making a good point area called ukraine and none of these places exist anymore and no one cares mm. they won't see it as the world almost ending but the cuban missile crisis was that not the world almost ending mm. the russian military turned back jfk put the blockade in and didn't push the button was that the world almost ending yeah sure so and that was in the 60s i don't know mm. i don't think we're any closer to the world almost ending than we've been many many times yeah one thing to to add to that though and i don't know the military term for this but there is the military term for, I have a nuclear weapon, you have a nuclear weapon. Mutually I'm, assured destruction. There you go, you know that, of course you do. But if we give that power away from a human who, ha who will die if they press it to an AI who yes. won't, and the AI can make the choice, are we not a bit closer to the potential existential threat? Yeah, sure. It's terrifying, and the, and the concept of AI is terrifying. But I'm a believer in the ultimate goals of humanity. I believe that good will triumph over evil in the end. And my view with AI is probably the same as, again, let's take historical context. It's the Stone Age, right? I invent bronze. We're moving into the Bronze Age. You could say, as someone who doesn't like what I'm doing, hey, look, I know you're trying to advance technology, but that's really sharp. You could make loads of those in the swords and go and stab people. And some people, when the Bronze Age came about, did in fact make bronze swords and stab Ooh. everybody. But also, you know, they built, the Greeks built civilizations and started having, you know, they invented democracy. And all these beautiful things happened because of the Bronze Age. So maybe we're moving into the AI age. And it's very easy to look at the negatives. Oh, well, they took this pop star and made it look like she's having sex. Oh, my God, we need to ban AI because it's upset some people. The implications of what AI could do. Imagine you have engineers designing aircraft and buildings and it takes months and years to design these imagine asking ai in the future design the most efficient aircraft ever and how to build it boom brr, blueprints like the implications of ai and what it can do are so much greater well, it's than, like the internet uh, good and bad drones controlled by AI same and thing kills a soldier what if yes evil things can be done with technology but you name me you use it uh, depend how you use iron it. to steel to, that couldn't have the same argument applied it, it's very hard yeah, I think, for example, the Gatling gun, I think that was designed by someone for good to reduce the amount of people on your side that would get killed because yes. you didn't need as many single soldiers. Yes. And, of course, then it goes into the wrong hands and then, and then it, it kills everyone. Yes, exactly. Is that not everything? Everything is good and bad. Like, you know, when glass, has, that can be used as a weapon or it can be used for us to get light. Exactly. So th there we go. So yeah. AI, I don't do the doom and gloom implications of AI. Yeah. When I see people who I overwhelmingly largely agree with and like, like Elon, talking about XAI, I'm going to do some AI, I'm like, good. Mm. If I saw, I don't know, George Soros being like, ah, I'm going to be the AI guy, I'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> let's talk about this AI thing. But when, they, when people like Elon, who runs Tesla, which isn't just a car company, it's a data collection company. Remember, every single Tesla car that ever drives everywhere, that ever experiences a road accident, is collecting data and AI is going to start thinking for cars. I'm like, okay, he's the man for the job. Do I think Elon is going to give his AI nuclear weapons capabilities? No. So I'm an overwhelmingly positive person, and I believe in the future of humanity, because we made it through the Bronze Age without everyone stabbing each other with bronze swords. We got to the age of electricity without everyone using it to electrocute each other. You know, it, it's fine, mm. hopefully. Mm. Or the world could blow up, but... Mm. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. That's just, the, that's just the way I view these things. Yeah. I don't look at them as problems. Mm. It's good. So you said you know the goals of humanity, so I'm going to ask you that in a minute. But one thing you said is you believe that good always triumphs over evil. Does it, though? Or does good sometimes <laughs> have the upper hand and then bad sometimes has the upper hand and it just goes around in cycles like that forever? The fact that we are still here and civilization is still progressing means good is triumphing over evil mm. obviously bad things happen everywhere in the world there are evil people evil governments evil armies evil regimes good armies good regimes but i feel like in this strange journey that humanity's gone through the fact that minus the dark ages well no but you could take china and say I'm, I'm getting boring but you can basically look throughout the time scale and be like we have advanced and progressed 
and life expectancy is longer. We can treat diseases that used to kill people. I'm like, okay, humanity is overall winning. Mm. Now, do I think in 300 years that the world is going to be a smoking ruin, or do I believe it's going to be hopefully safer, more technologically advanced, people living longer lifespans, our great, 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 great grandkids will, for the first time ever, have access to all the stuff that we did and be able to see us and stuff. It's a very cool thing to think about, and I think, I think good is winning over evil. Mm. I think it is, because the forces of evil, the true forces of evil that have ever really existed in humanity, would love to see everything destroyed. That's true evil. What could be more evil than wanting to destroy the earth and destroy the human race? Nothing. Mm. And uh, yeah, we, we're, so far it looks like we're winning. Mm. I'm doing okay. You mm. doing okay? <laughs> I'm doing okay. Good, the forces are good at winning. <laughs> yeah. That's the way I see things. So. Yeah. And those other goals of humanity then, what are they other than good triumphing over evil? Well, it's, it's the goals of humanity. Becoming boring, bro. Aren't really any different to the goals of any life form on the planet. To, to be honest, Andrew Tate's interview was much more interesting than this one. To do that, we have to get past Earth, we have to get onto other planets. <laughs> to be and honest, the other one was much funnier. Because obviously the Earth has its time limit, the Earth is going to expire eventually. And the Sun as well, yeah, that'll exactly. be gone in five billion years. Exactly, yeah. and that cooks the Earth with it. So, yeah, yeah I mean, the, the preservation of one's own species is obviously the ultimate goal of every species, whether it be a bacteria or a, or a possum or a crow. but humanity is actually in a very special position. Humanity is in the special position where the preservation of life on Earth itself Bro, it's becoming boring. Mortals could be on of life. So the future of life on Earth, I think, on Earth as a whole. Mm. What do you think is the most destructive ideology? Mm. Do I say something that could get me into trouble? Yes, please. <laughs> That's how you love. I think the most destructive ideology is the is that countries and borders and patriotism and nationalism are all bad things. Mm -hmm. They're terrible. You know these type of people who are, oh, it's one earth. I'm a citizen of earth. Everyone should be allowed to go everywhere. It's true. There should be no borders. There should be no border checks. Uh, people should be able to completely freely move around Earth and just do whatever they like. I, I actually, you know, what he's saying is really nice because this kind of things ap apply only in uh, in Africa. They apply it only in Africa. African, they cannot go everywhere. It's like uh, a big prison. Prison. I think. I actually you need, think you need to go through border. You, to, you cannot have visa to go to world. Europe. You cannot it's have visa to go to ideology here. Ideology because the word culture, Fuck. correct me if I'm wrong, the word, the, the word culture actually only exists even in bacterial claims, uh, bacterial um, uh, what's terms, if it's isolated. You have a culture of bacteria. It's all one type of bacteria. You can't have uh, a culture if it's 10 million different types of bacteria in a petri dish. For example, so I like the fact that if I go to the Gambia, they serve Gambian food and there are Gambian people there and Gambian people in charge. In Japan, the same thing. In South Korea and lots of places where I've been, I like to experience other cultures. And yeah. other cultures are wonderful and they're beautiful. But pretend that humanity itself is one culture and everyone's the same and everyone can go anywhere and do anything they like. I think that's a dangerous ideology. I like the fact that different cultures come up with different things. Different cultures think in different ways. Different inventions come from different cultures. No, we're, people... we're not saying. I'm not. Uh, I will uh, say like I'm not saying like all everybody gonna be the same. No, I'm saying there will be no border for you to be able to go wherever you want to go and and ex ex uh, experiment other uh, culture and see how other culture live and maybe you can bring some of them to 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 your country and show it like this and this is how they live and that's how you're gonna exchange the culture. It's like. If it would be no, if it was no border, it would be really nicer. Is, is, is formed and phrased, alters how people think. That's why Germans like. are so efficient. They have one of the most efficient languages. I'm going to bore you and get into that. I don't know if you speak German, but um. Well, I do. Yeah, I think that cultures need to be respected. I do. I do speak German because I'm studying it. I do speak it because I'm studying, it, but I'm not speaking good, and it's really hard also. Uh, it's not like English that easy for you to get it. It's really hard to get it, but eventually you're gonna get it. And also the German are also you have to understand also uh, when you speak their language and you're just trying to speak, they they really don't care. That 
just speak or whatever you studied in school whatever you get just speak because they, they listen and they're really normal for it and that's from an experience of living here so they don't care they're just like this in its healthiest form need to be respected and loved and 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 pushed mm. and when you first smiled uh, and something came into your head of should I say it? Yeah. Was it that? Or uh, yeah, was it something yeah, of course else? it was, because yeah. people will now call me a racist. Right. But they'll only call you a racist if I say I think Romania should be overwhelmingly Romanian. No one really care. And I say I think Japan should be overwhelmingly Japanese. But if I say Ireland should be overwhelmingly Irish, they'll call me a racist. I'm quarter, I'm mixed race. I'm half black, quarter Irish, quarter English. I'm a mix of the races myself. So obviously I'm not, but yeah, it's a very taboo idea for some reason in the western world it's not taboo anywhere else i don't think it's hard to say you're algerian or you're moroccan or like the united states Tunisian, or united you're states japanese like i don't think it's because it's your race it has nothing to do with racism the united states is actually one of the only countries because i guess the british empire wiped out all the natives that is a truly multi-racial society and it's unique american culture is unique it's very different from anything else we have. We're allowed all the guns we like, so we hold the government at ransom. It's a very weird idea, but that's what America is, and we should love America for what it is, and let America be America, in the same way we should let every other country be every other country. Mm. Instead of trying to police the world, drag every other country down or up, or whichever way you see it, and just try to uh, welcome too many people from, from countries that have different values. Mm. And, and that stands with, and that applies to, by the way, every country on earth i'm a i live in romania i'm an american i'm also half british i'm not speaking for any country i'm speaking for every country in the world if you are a mexican and two million chinese people want to move into mexico city you should say no i want mexico city to be overwhelmingly mexican i think i think that mexicans have the right to say that mm. but it's a controversial idea today I and mean, you get labeled a bunch of horrible things for saying it mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> let's see what the backlash is for this it won't be jail. <laughs> no. <laughs> what defines sexual consent? You ask Andrew this. That's a very tricky question. That's a question I didn't think I'd get. You know, I think women give consent. Women, men are always a lot more up for. Well, I believe in this uh, kind of this topic is like uh, men, like he said, men won't want to have sex all the time. But in the end, they depend on the woman. She agree or no? She doesn't, then no. Than women are as a whole. Of course, there are variations in that, and but exceptions don't disprove the rule. Women are the gatekeepers to sex. That's true. And the truth is this: if you're a man, you know if a woman's consented or not. You know, I've never had sex against a woman's consent. If I did, I should be in jail. 20 years minimum. I'm, I'm, I'm the father of a daughter. I, the, the idea of a rapist detests me. In every jail in the world, including Romanian jail, the people who are committing those types of crimes are ostracized, punished, and so they should be. The truth is, when you try to police human nature, you go down these absurd spirals of just pure nonsense in uh, it was in spain they proposed that they needed a signed piece of paper before having sex so here's the thing i've had consensual sex where the woman's never said yes or no or anything to me you've gone on light out it's been wonderful it's been romantic the chemistry builds up your hand touches hers you're sitting in the seats of the theater there's an intermission the lights go out you go in for the kiss, she kisses you back, you go back to the house afterwards, you pour a glass of wine, you talk, you start kissing, and then sex. There's, with, at no point did I stop the kissing. Do you consent to having sexual intercourse with me? Like, what kind of insane law would that be? Consent is given most of the time without any words being spoken. And there are men and women in this room, and everyone knows exactly what I'm talking about. Everyone already knows this. The world's gone nuts, bro. The world, so, so what does define sexual consent? If you, can, if you can fully consent, both parties can fully consent with no words spoken, what does define it? The question is, you know. As a man, you know if she's consented or not. You yeah, that's never true. never tried to have sex with a woman and she said no, and she said no without speaking. You're kissing her, exactly the same story happens. She's on your bed, you touch her stomach, you start reaching up her top, she grabs your hands and pulls it down. 
That's a no. It's fine. Stop. <laughs> have another glass of wine and go to sleep. It isn't a big deal. So how do you define it? You can't police this. Shit. All you can do is teach men not to be scumbag, rapists, pieces of. Shit. You sure. teach men the proper way of dealing with women, and what you do is you obviously massively punish rapists who are convicted. I would say it one more time. When you be fearful of Allah and you know this is wrong, you will not do it. That's why it all go back to the religion. When you are a religious guy and you I'm speaking about the real religious and they don't do this garbage. When you are religious and fearful, you will not hurt anybody else. Even an animal you will not you cannot hurt nobody. So yeah. Uh, but some people do and like we say the devil exists and evil exists, so yeah, it's cruel, you were of rape. And you also massively punish false accusers who are proven, hear me out, if a man goes to trial for rape and he's found not guilty, you don't punish the woman, you don't punish her, because it could have been. He's found not guilty, that doesn't mean she's a false accuser. But when you have evidence, it's been found, text messages, ha ha, I'm gonna say he raped me, blah, blah. clear evidence of a false accusation, give her the same sentences. Let people respect consent much more. You can't police it. Sign bits of paper, apps. It's a joke. An app might work in today's day and age. Beep, beep, it's an app. But then, but then here's the thing. I get consent on the app. No, let's say I get consent on the paper. Let's go down this rabbit hole because I like this question. I'm enjoying this. I and beautiful woman A are gonna have sex with each other. We're kissing, we're talking, the exact same date, date nights happen. I stop. Do you consent to having sex with me? Yes, I do. Here are the consent forms. Please sign it, write your date, stamp it, whatever, boom, boom, boom. Consent form's done, right? Boom. I grab hold of her, I start kissing her badly. I can't kiss very well. I drop my pants, I've got tiny little And she says, you know what, Tristan, I don't want to have sex with you anymore. Well, I've got the signed paper. That's when rape is just, that's when rape is, uh, is, uh, is legally excusable you could say to the judge oh i have this piece of paper rapists can then get away with rape if you let them do it i was about to say rape is justified i didn't mean that i meant rape is justified in the eyes of the law because you could do anything you want to her then i've got the signed bit of paper you can't do that that's sick that's disgusting so yeah i think consent what defines sexual consent if you're a man you know what defines sexual consent you know when she's too drunk you know when she tries to stop you you know when she's completely exactly when she's you know when she say yeah. yes and you know when she's no said no words, when papers, she no papers, yeah exactly we men we know when she said yes and we know when she said no and if she said no good good night go to sleep don't need to do dumb shit and don't need to be uh, like a scumbag like he said you don't need to be a scumbag and yeah uh, but uh, we all we all know that she even know no need for words speaking for you to uh, for me, I'm, uh, as a Muslim, this is things haram anyway. But uh, for us, we see it as a uh, get married and then have kids and have se have sex, have kids, uh, raise a family and stuff like this. So this is all again about the West. Apps, clicks, doesn't matter. You know. Mm. And if you don't respect that, you deserve to go to jail. Mm. I mean, it's true. A sip of water after that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was just well, thinking, I wonder if Tristan needs a little break. Have you just come to no, I, I never thought about the question, really. But now that I go down the rabbit hole, I realize how stupid these piece of paper signing consent laws even are. Mm. It's, it's actually ridiculous. Humans have had sex for in the entirety of human history. Yeah, we didn't need tablets exactly. or scrolls. Yeah, and, and rape was punishable in the Roman Empire, and rape was punishable in the Mongol Empire, mm. and rape was punishable everywhere, as it should be. But you can't start policing consent. Mm. Ever heard of a forged signature? That would be a f problem. Yeah. Who's better with women? You or Andrew? Obviously. And I don't want to upset anyone, but obviously me. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. You know, I don't think anyone's better with women or worse than women. Than worse with women. Well, you, it, surely I, you're not very good with women if you want women and you can't get women. Okay. If you want women and you can't get women, you're bad with women. Mm. But let me give you an example. I, especially in my younger days, would meet and date and sleep with a lot of beautiful women. A lot of beautiful women. And let's take example A, Mr. Anonymous. He fell in love when he was 17, married his wife at 22, 
And his wife isn't maybe smoking hot, but he's been with her for 40 years, and they're now a 60-year-old married couple. Who's better with women, me or him? You don't know. I, I can't answer the question. I don't know if anyone at home can. Mm. It's, it depends on what you want. Exactly, it's if true. If you are a tall, kickboxing champion millionaire who's you know charming and knows how to speak well and knows how to make jokes and stuff, you can get women. You can get women, and both of us are both of those or all of those things. So if you want, if we want women, we can get women. Who's better? I, I couldn't answer the question because I don't even know the parameters. The million people who will watch this, plus, they all have different ideas of what good with women means. Well, I asked Andrew the same question. What do you think he said? Me. He did. <laughs> <laughs> so that means you think you. <laughs> <laughs> You may have got me there. I'm saying nothing. <laughs> I, I, pl I plead the fifth. <laughs> what about giving us some tips, three tips, on getting good with women? Oh, I can do this all day. Well, then I'm, I, I flew out here. I've got all day. Right, easy. One, there are no tips. If women don't like you, it's your fault, and they don't like you. I am sick of dating coaches trying to give tips to get women. Oh, well, if you make this kind of joke, or if you first insult her subtly and then say something, it increases this her garbage. level of... No, no, no. This garbage. I don't try to get women, and that's the only tip I can give you, but here are the tips. One, work super hard every day. Two, train super hard every day and be in shape. Three, make sure your dress looks all right, your beard looks okay, don't walk around looking scruffy. Take showers. Basic stuff. Live in a nice house. Have a fun lifestyle. All the tenets of hard work, it's funny actually the way that God works and the way the universe works. All the tenets of hard work that I preach that makes men better men. If you took woman out, women out of the equation, it would still be true. But when women are in the equation, then you don't need tips. You don't need tips. You're in great shape, you got a six pack, you're worth $10 million, you look smart, you look sharp, You've showered that morning, you've read a lot of uh, books, a lot of literature, you've listened to a lot of audio books, watched a lot of documentaries, you've got interesting things to say. All the things that builds a great man. But these, if, are, these are tips. And well, this no, isn't taught in school, well, so the, these are tips. Well, the tip is, if you need tips, then you're not living life right. No? Yes, but <laughs> every winner was once a beginner. Yes. In true. the sense that there's many people yes. who don't know this yet, yeah, and so, you do, and so, they're willing and they want to yeah. learn. So if yeah. you want women, I can't teach you, but I can teach you how to be the type of man that women want. And when is you that get not to, the same yes. thing? Well, uh, maybe, maybe it is. It's just, yeah, it is the same thing. What, I think what you're saying is no gimmicky tips. What you're saying is, because I think to get rich, it's not just about learning secret tips to get rich. You have to become well. Yes, and, exactly. You know, when you become what you want to be, you get it. Yes. You know, I, I believe you don't get what you want, you get what you are. That's a very good way of putting it, yeah. And so I think what you're saying is become the man the woman wants. Yeah. As and opposed to saying, you know, can gain them. How can I, in my current circumstances, so I play PlayStation all day, I live at my mother's house. I'm 35, I'm the same Tristan Tate. I've never worked out though. I'm really I've got no muscles, maybe a big, maybe a beer belly, I eat bad food. You know, I haven't got any nice clothes. Um, how does that guy get women? He is me. What tips do I give him? There are no tips. There are. But I become get... this version of yes, you. That exactly. is tips. Yeah, it, I guess it is. I yeah. guess it is. But I... are, are you just a bit worried about coming across like those who give tips? Well, yeah, absolutely. Because I don't like to give dating advice in that way. Thank you very much. I don't like to give dating advice in that way because I'm like, if women don't want you, I can't teach you anything because I've got it on easy mode because I've done all the hard work. I've done all the hard work of getting rich, staying in shape, learning things, becoming articulate, knowing how to speak, developing a sense of humor, all the things, having a fun lifestyle, all the hard things I've done mean I now play the women game on easy mode. If I had Instagram, which I don't, if I activated Is that because you got cancelled? I, I, I got cancelled, now I, don't, I won't make a new page. Nah. There are a bunch of fan accounts of me, but I don't have Instagram. If I did, I'd just sit and look at the inbox and 40, 50 women would write me every single day and I could take my pick. Now, those aren't the type of women you want to marry, but like I said earlier, I mean, they're good for what they're good for, and I could go and find a wife. I could go to the library, approach the beautiful girl, talk to her a little bit, and she'd be on my arm. So I've done all the hard work, so now I'm in easy mode. So if you haven't done any of the hard work, I can't tell you if I get women, because I just do. 
I just do and they just don't. But you and did, you, having this conversation, you did. You said, work on your sense of humor, work on articulation, work yes. on your in intellect, work on your body. Yeah, so then, you did. Well, yeah, I did. Yeah. I did, but, then, but, then it's, but those aren't the tips that people want. When a fat out shake dude. You don't teach, teach what people want, do you? You I teach don't. what they need. Need to hear. So when yeah. a fat out shake dude lives with his mom and plays video games, says, hey, Tristan, uh, give me some tips on how to get women. He's not expecting me to say, change your entire lifestyle, work hard for seven years, and then the women will come easy. He doesn't want that. What he wants is a magic spell, mm. something you could say to them to trick them, brainwash them, make them fall in love with you. It doesn't exist. Mm. It doesn't exist. Women mm. are their own people, and they like what they like. And um, men like what they like. Mm. And, you know, if I were to say to, a really, really obnoxious, rude, low-quality, unattractive, overweight weight woman. If she was to ask a supermodel, I'm not a supermodel, I'm not comparing myself in that way, but in terms of male value with, with everything I've done, maybe I'm, I'm up there. If she would ask a supermodel, hey, how do you get guys? Well, just flutter your eyelashes. There's no magic trick. She looks like a pig, she looks like a Barbie. One of them's gonna get the guy's attention and one of them isn't, and it's the same with men. But men don't see it that way because there's not such a glaringly obvious difference in what's attractive and what's not. You know, I, I can look very similar to a dude who's not attractive to women. Does that make sense? But I'm attractive to women because when I open my mouth and speak, they like what I say. When, I, when I'm doing things, they like how I live. But I, I don't need to be that physically different from the guy who can't get women. So it's, it's less obvious for men. Mm. And let's flip it on the other side. What? would you, you don't like to give tips, so these aren't tips, but what would you say to the tips that aren't tips to women to get a good man? Uh, different men have different, we have to define two, two different terms before we start. What is a good man? And two, what does get mean? So, of course, I think of a good man and get as handsome, smart, charming, will take care of you, will provide for you, not necessarily rich, but will provide for you, and get as in long-term relationship with the prospect of trying to get married. So let's define it that way first because the question can be answered in lots of different ways. One, do not be the type of girl who sleeps around. I don't care what modern society tells you, no man wants to marry the girl with a high body count. Sure, girls with high body counts get lots of attention, but they don't really get attention from the men who they want to end up marrying. And also, they might get attention from the type of men that they want to end up marrying, but they get that attention for a weekend and that's it. Don't have a high body count, do not sleep around. Enter every single relationship with the goal that, yes, I think this man would make a good husband, and I'm only going to be with him with the goal of marrying him. Now, it might not work out, you might have two or three failed relationships, that's life, that's what happens, no one really cares. But yeah, don't, don't sleep around, don't eat too much, and be nice and pleasant and bring them a good energy. I think, that's, I think it's as simple as that for women. Mm. So when you say... Uh, but, but sorry, I'll, sorry, I'll redefine please, the question. Please. If you think getting a man means getting him to buy you stuff, and a good man, as in a stupid man who will buy you lots of presents, see, these are two different questions, mm. then by all means, flaunt yourself on the internet, sleep with every dude who buys you a handbag, enjoy your handbag collection, that's cool, but just don't ask where all the good men are when it's time to get married. And I don't judge anyone for any of this stuff. As I said, I'm sick of these red pill podcasts mm. sitting down these women who are promiscuous and perhaps low quality in my eyes or your eyes or a lot of men's standards saying, you're not wives and you do this and that's bad and that's it. The wives won't go sit on the podcasts. There are wives out there and those women are useful. You think I've never rented a yacht and filled it with a bunch of women that I wanted to sleep with? None of them were wives. Love you girls. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> They might a, have been someone else's had, wife. Had a great time, but do you get my point? Like, um, don't try yeah. to change people and don't judge people and don't, don't be so hate-filled towards women who aren't living the way that you would want them to live if you were going to marry them. They're not going to marry you and you're not mm. going to marry them. Leave them alone. Mm. Let them go and do it. Yeah. Coffee good? <laughs> Very good. good. Full of energy. <laughs> so what's a high body count then for a woman? I actually mathematically wrote this on Twitter once as <laughs> a joke. As a joke, I, I wrote down, I wrote down that an acceptable body count is one for every two years she ages past the age of 18. That's what I wrote on Twitter, because I thought about it, I typed it down. Is that true? No. Are there- So by the time she's 30, she's only allowed to have had, what, six partners? Uh, if you get to 30 and a woman says she has six partners, that's not high. 
No. It's not low, but that's not high. You wouldn't say this girl's a hoe. This girl's a slut. This girl's all the horrible names that, mm. no, not me, all the horrible names that like red pill influencers mm. and stuff use towards women. You wouldn't say a 30 year old woman who's had sex with six men, you know, she, two years, per, she's had a few she, failed relationships. She might have really tried hard, fell yeah. in love, and the man yeah. binned her off, binned her off, and she yeah. might have only ever had one partner. I, I, will, I, I, will, un, I will, I guess, unapologetically say that there are some great women out there who tried to be with me. I was not in that place at the time, too busy building my business. I did sleep with them, you know, whatever, wasn't interested. And they're great girls, and they'll, mm. make, they'll make someone a great wife one day. And they were, I guess, trying to be serious about me, but I wasn't mm. that serious. And that doesn't yeah, make her bad. No, they can't help yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She's not the, the bad person for sleeping with me. No. So, yeah, I, I wrote that down on Twitter, at, on X, as a joke. But it's kind of good math. The math kind of adds up. Whereas if she's 20 and she says six, you'd be like, ooh, when did you, what, so at maybe 18, you started six in two years? That, mm, that's quite quick. But three, three in a year, is that a lot? I don't know. And there are no rules to this. There really are no rules to this. And there are no- society's a bit different, isn't it? Well, society, well as... society's different. And also, I don't try to police people's behavior. Mm. So when, what I say is an acceptable body count I expect everybody here who's watching, who maybe doesn't agree with me, to raise their middle finger to the, finger to the screen and say, this guy, who is he to judge what my body count is and isn't? And I completely agree, but if I get married, she's gonna have a body count under two or three. All right, so, so like, that's just my own personal right. preference and yeah. I'm allowed to have my preference you too. Are. So, okay, it's off. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, body count zero. You, um, you find someone, her body counts, Three. Yep. She's the right age for you. Yeah. You fall in love with her. Yeah. Everything is there. And then you find out it was 12. What happens? Um, but you're in love with her. Yeah, I, I wouldn't marry her, but not. No, but you already had. I already found out. Yeah. Oh, I'd already fallen got in love married. with her. You married her. Everything's there. And then you, someone told you, no, her body count's not three. It's 12. It's, it's 12 or it's 15. And the only reason she lied to you is because she loved you. And she knew because of this podcast that you would never have got with her if she'd have told the truth. Mm, interesting. You know, I've had girls like that. I've had <laughs> girls who pretended to be good girls and that's, but the thing is with me is, like with a, if a man's drank coffee from a different, a thousand different places, he knows what good coffee is and bad coffee is. I really can't be lied to as easily as most people. Mm -hmm. I kind of know. I have a feel for it early on. I can just kind of tell. And it's not that hard to find out about people especially when they're from the same town or city as you. It's really not hard. Mm. So I have a very good feel for it. So I like to think that that would be very hard to do because every time it's happened to me, I start dating a girl, she tells me a story about her past, blah, blah, blah. I notice things don't add up very quickly and I'm just like, well, wh why would you bullshit me? And what I always do in those circumstances, and I guess I'd do the same if I was married, is stop talking to them because it's not about the actual body count. It's about the dishonesty of pretending to be someone that you're not. I've had girls, I had a girl recently, she was, she, I'll, say, I'll say she's Polish, she doesn't matter. But anyway, she comes and meets me, we go out, have dinner and stuff and blah, blah, blah. She comes back to, to Romania to meet me again for the second time, and I found out she's an OnlyFans model who I, I wouldn't care, naked pictures, look, it's page three, don't care. But it was like full on having sex with people OnlyFans. And I was just like, well, why didn't you tell me that? Like, I'm not that mad, because Hanging out with you and sleeping with you sometimes is like, fine. I was never going to marry you. But the fact that you tried to sell yourself off as a different product. No, I'm not fun material. I'm wife material. The fact that you tried to do that, I'm just like, well, I, can't, I don't really want to see you anymore. It instantly put me off. Does that, does that make sense? Mm. So yeah, I, I'd have to stop talking to them. It's the dishonesty I can't take. Mm. Same with friends. If I met a friend and his back, if I found out the background story of any of my guys, the people here, if I found out they glaringly, obviously lied about something, I'd be like, well, why did you lie? I don't, I don't get what you were trying to do. Your intentions when you met me obviously were dishonest. Mm. If you met me and you were hanging out with me and next week it turns out that me and Andrew have never had any money, our dad's not dead and he's an oil billionaire, you'd immediately think, well, f those two. Because they've sold my, me an image of themselves and have tried to come across as genuinely these people when they weren't. And that's it. So I'd have to cut her off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd divorce her. Yeah, wow. My dad is not an oil billionaire, and he is dead, and I did make all my own money. So <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. just FYI. Yeah. But it's an example. Mm. So I don't really normally talk about these things on my podcast because I, 
I'm more interested in business and money. Understood. So that's why I'm going to carry on talking about it. Let's do it. Because this yeah. is fun and different. Why not? Um, so just let me throw you another hypothetical situation. You've got a smart, sassy, challenging, intellectual, hot woman. And because she has a body count of 20, she's got an amazing amount of life experience that maybe someone with a body count of two or three wouldn't have had. She really knows how to please a man, and she can do shit in bed that but someone with a body count of two or three just can't do. I know lots of women like that. OK, but you're, you're still not marrying that person. No, I'll call them on Friday nights. That's what that's <laughs> it. And the thing is, I'm not speaking as myself today. I'm, I'm, I'm not speaking as myself, you know, because I'm not such a womanizer anymore. I'm, I'm taking the old mindset I used to have and applying, because I know the example. Five names come to mind when you, when you mm. name that person. I mean, that, that's Ten. a very compelling like, woman, yeah. isn't so, it? So yeah. all I do is think into the past and what did I do at that time? I just, I just hung out with them sometimes. It was fun. Mm. That's it. Use protection, no one gets hurt, no big deal. Well, I didn't understand what the issue was, but I didn't understand what the issue was. If anyone had an issue with it, it's mine and her private life, and everyone can piss off. Mm. But, um, yeah, I can think of people like that. And my answer is just, no, I never thought of marrying them. They were fun to have around, and that's what, exactly what I did. Mm. All right. Should we change it up? Because we've got a new round. A new round? A new round. We've, Let's go. we've never done this before. Well, we did it with Andrew. Um, so today is the first time we've ever, ever done this kind okay. of round. And yeah, Andrew really liked it, so let's see how you... It's one word answer. One word answer? Yeah, one word answer. Great, let's uh, go. And ideally what comes to your mind, but if you want to think, of course, that's fine. I'll try to think for as short a time as possible. That's cool. So when I say the word, y y you're hitting me up. So what word first comes to mind when I say war? Peace. Ooh. Boring. What is it? That's such a boring answer. That's the first word that came to my mind, though. Then it's your, it's not boring answer, it's your answer. I'm not bored. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone at home just shuts off the podcast now. War, peace? Yeah. I mean, Tom uh, Stewart's War, War and Peace is a good is... book. I guess I've read that book, and maybe that's why it came up. Who knows? Ooh. What's the first word that comes to your mind when I say LGBTQ+. Insane. When I say what is a man, what's the word that comes to your mind? Biological human male. Uh, male. What's the first word that comes to your mind when I say how you feel about women? Obsessed. <laughs> What's the first word that comes to mind when I say misogyny? <laughs> Andrew, but that's not because he is. <laughs> it's because of the headlines. It's because of the headlines. I would say, no, I guess misunderstood would be my answer. The term is... You know, you, you know, the funny thing is about this answer is like, it's true. Be, be, before Andrew, I didn't know this word. I didn't. I, I don't understand the meaning of misogyny. So, you understand how much brainwashed we are. We reach in a point that they label this word with him. So every time you hear it, you hear, you visual you visualize Andrew. So it's how much powerful they can label just a word, a simple word, with a guy. So that's how much powerful they are. And it's so funny there to me because how this proves how much we brainwash. Most of us we don't understand even what does it mean, misogyny. I don't. Every time I hear it, it's just okay. Okay, so everything well, my misogyny is what means what Andrew is. So everything is uh, against Andrew. He's not a misogyny. <laughs> I don't know what it does it mean anyway. Misogyny is misunderstood. But of course I'm going to say Andrew, because every time I hear that word, that's, that's the trigger word that the media uses. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <Honestly>. exactly. <laughs> the UK. Failed. UK. Failed. The BBC. Trash. <laughs> Piers Morgan. Honest. Donald Trump. Hero. The Matrix. Constricting. Depression. Imaginary. Rob Moore. Gentleman. Oh. Good round. I like that. Yeah. Andrew called me handsome. So. Yeah. <laughs> when I say to a women obsessed, um, I feel like that's true because my life revolves around, especially a lot of my work, and me working so hard and me trying to be the man that I am is, you know, I'd hate to see my mother work. I'd hate to see my daughter ever be in a bad position, her mother. I like to take care of these people, and it's maybe the first thing I think of when I wake up in the morning. 
is ev are they all okay? It's one of my first ever thoughts. Mm. So yeah, it is kind of an obsession. Mm. I didn't mean I'm obsessed with running around chasing women anymore. <laughs> oh, so that makes it all right now. It makes it all right. You're not an axe murderer anymore. Anymore. You no, did it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. um, I don't want this round to be this. I don't want this show to be about Andrew. I'm sure you've been asked a million questions about Andrew. My, my relationship with Andrew is a defining aspect of my life. So I'm not offended at all when people want to ask me about mm. Andrew. Which I haven't yet. No, you so haven't I, yet. So what I've done is just made a, put a nice little fence around it and just doing an Andrew round. Cool. Let's yeah. do an Andrew round. Okay. Is there anything that Andrew's ever said that shocked you? Never. I know when he's joking, I know when he's not. He's never said anything shocking to me ever. Are you in any way pissed off with Andrew at what he might have brought to your door? No, no. I'm very happy for everything Andrew's brought to my door. I wouldn't be the man I was without Andrew. I probably wouldn't be as accomplished a kickboxer or a fighter if not for Andrew. Uh, Business-wise, you know, we're a team and we wouldn't have made it this far without Andrew, without me. All the, when I look at my door and I open it, and I know that everyone in my life is completely taken care of. I've got all these cars, I've got all these mansions, I've got these great group of friends, I've got my brother, I've got the friendship and the love I get from him. Oh, but there's a little bit of jail. Boo hoo. I don't care at all. What he's brought to me, my door, you're talking about the negative things. The first things that came to my mind were positive things. Mm, I'm not talking about anything. I'm just Fine. asking questions. Oh, there we go. Well, that's my perspective on it. Mm. Have you seen any cracks appear in Andrew's mental health? Never. Since going to jail, have you ever seen... I mean, he has having nightmares, wasn't he? Sometimes you have nightmares. Mm. It's the way it is. Mm. So you if, I, if I had nightmares, I just wouldn't talk about it. Mm. Andrew, I guess, lets people in a bit more, but... No, there's no cracks no. in Andrew's mental health. I don't, he's not going to flip out and, you know, murder anyone or start human trafficking for real. Like, yeah, but, he's, he's, he's fine. But having... <laughs> some mental health challenges doesn't manifest always in killing people sometimes it can just you can break a little bit you can feel lonely you can cry you know these things not yeah. everything ends in murder and rape does that, it that is true, that's true. <laughs> of course and I guess, I guess to be fair I'm being flippant about the issue I am being very flippant about the issue because it's very easy for me to say oh Andrew's so tough don't worry it's fine mm. but there are very tough people who do have mental health problems so I'm actually not making fun of mental health problems when mm. I say, oh, Andrew's too tough for that stuff. Mm. Um, I think just Andrew's, Andrew's built differently. No, I haven't seen any, any cracks. Um, would you anything. say if you had? Maybe, yeah. I guess, mm. I, I guess I would because I don't think it's something that can emasculate a person. I look at someone like Tyson Fury, who is an absolute legend, by the way, who's gone through some mental health problems. I don't think, oh, he went through mental health problems. He's no. weak. He's Tyson Fury. He's a heavyweight world champion. He's the man, isn't mm. he? So yeah, I don't think that if I said, of course the haters would jump on it, but if I said, oh, Andrew seemed a bit more upset or something, I don't think it would in any way reflect badly on him. Mm. But my honest answer is no. Mm. What do you think is most misunderstood about Andrew? Um, how kind his and how message. he is. His message. Um, you know, what, he's just a, just a great guy, a really great person. He'd, he'd do anything for anyone if he could. If it's within his power, he'd do anything to help anyone. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a really wonderful person, and it's very easy to look at stupid jokes he made about, oh, women can't drive. Look, one, that's not a joke, and two, that doesn't make him the worst person in the world. You know who else has made jokes about women being bad drivers? Basically every single comedian in the universe prior to 2005. Leave the guy alone. Like, he's a really wonderful person. Mm. So I think that's what's misunderstood. When people meet him, I'll meet people who don't know Andrew, and they'll come to my house, and they're like, wow, your brother's actually really nice. I'm like... What did you think he was going to do? Punch you in the face? Like, what, what do you expect when you meet Andrew Tate? You've met Andrew. You've met Andrew. Yeah. Did, is, is he aggressive or uh, abrasive? Or do, does he make you feel uncomfortable? No, he's actually such a good guy. Mm. And I think that is massively misunderstood. And the fact that you would agree means that I'm right because we know what pe some people's opinions of are him. Mm. Will you and Andrew ever fight the Paul brothers? Hmm. So I was... This one I heard it in a TikTok. I'm in good shape. Could I fight again? Yes. And the answer was shock it's a difficult you. Difficult issue, and I guess my my answer would be, they need the clout and they need the money far more than us. One of them is in severe debt because he scammed a bunch of his fans, and I'm not here to sh on the full. Speaking brothers, about Logan, I would no? consider a, a friend. I like I talk to him like a big brother talks to a little brother. But as for Logan saying my name, I mean, the thing is, he's had what six fights, lost them all, or lost all but one. 
you know, and he pretends to be a fighter because he can garnish this kind of attention because he's a, a media personality, but I don't have anything to prove to people like Logan Paul. I am much older than Logan, of course, and my fight career was very, very good. I won something like 30-something of my 40-something fights. Had some very tough battles, lots and lots of wins, European titles, some losses. You know, back in the day before Instagram existed, before everything was, you know, uh, was, was, before I was famous, before it gained me clout, but I am known as a fighter, and I'm known as a fighter in a way that he never will be. I'm known as a fighter in the way that if you throw me in a cell with a murderer, a rapist, and two drug dealers, who are all members of the Romanian various gangs, people look at me and go, oh, Tate, respect. That's how I'm known as a fighter. He would have left with a higher male body count than his fiance. That's how he would have left jail. And, <laughs> and. I thought he was gonna shock you. He, he's not starting at zero, remember that. He's not starting at zero in that regard. It's on, it's so the fact that he does his bat flips and takes his steroids and you know makes these big shows about fights, I've never said his name until now because he keeps saying my name. And the only reason I could think he's doing it is for viral hits or viral internet clips, but I have nothing to prove to him. When, when killers look me in the eye and they don't want any smoke and we're on cool terms, that's because I'm a fighter. And I'm a fighter in a way that he will never be. And he will never even understand. His little brother, Jake, is a fighter now. I will, I will give him that title. Not that it's mine to give. But I'm not interested in Logan Paul or anything he says about me. It doesn't keep me up at night. I'm very strong. I'm very fit. My shoulder is now fully recovered. Could I fight again? Yes, he needs it more than me. I don't have debts I need paying off. I haven't scammed my fans. I don't owe people a bunch of money. So, yeah, because he's come, he he, he yeah, opened a shit. Talk about the first interview with uh, Andrew Tate. I said like, when it comes to crypto, don't believe everything you saw on YouTube because they are getting paid and they need to for you to invest what they're gonna say because that the money you invest with, they're gonna take it. So it's never a win-win. It's basically if you someone win and someone lose. But I don't need to prove myself to him. I am a fighter and he is not. Mm. And if anyone wants to disagree, I don't give it. Do you think he'll ever step in the ring and do a fight like that? Let's call it the, you know, the crossover fighting or, or whatever. You know, no. I feel like what the Tate brothers are about, I don't know if my brother will or won't, and I can't speak for both of us, but I think what the Tate brothers are about is a lot bigger than the clout-chasing, money-making side of being an influencer. I always hate when people call me an influencer. I say, no, I'm a man with influence, and I've earned it. I'm not an influencer. I'm not known just for being known. So I was a fighter first. I became famous afterwards. I'm not a fighter because I had fame and used it to fight. Will I ever do it? No. I feel like my mission in life is bigger than taking some YouTuber who makes stupid jokes and beating him up in a boxing ring. I don't feel like that's gonna do anything to push my message and to advance what I'm trying to do with the young men of the world. I don't think it's gonna benefit me in any way. Well, I'm gonna make money, what, $10 million? I don't need it, I don't care. So no, I don't think I will, I don't think I will box. If I do fight again, it will be, honestly, you know how the UK works, inter-club competitions, local kickboxing gyms, mm. just me and them, the old school way, you know? I'm not going to make a big show and dance out of it and try and make my fans buy pay-per-views. That's not how I would do it. Mm. And on the subject of one thing that we have in common, which is where we were born, mm -hmm. what do you think of the state of the UK right now? Uh, it's abysmal. Absolutely abysmal. Okay, so we're going to stop it here. Yeah, it's, we, I think we did two hours anyway. 30 minutes, I'm going to finish it outside of... Maybe finish it, maybe no, you never know. Anyway, we're going to stop it here. It's been the interview of Tristan Tate uh, with Rob Moore. You can check it. I will leave you the link in the description. You can check the original. But then if you check this, what's the point of checking the original already? So I'm just going to quickly speak about the stores, guys. I'm going to show you what we have as a design, as you can see. And uh, yeah, make sure to purchase something for the, from there as a support for us and for me to be able at least to buy a camera for God's sake. And, uh, and have another ring light. Start making really good really good videos and re good, really good reaction anyway so yeah make sure to check the store guys and make sure to purchase and make sure to subscribe if you want to see if you have other suggestions make sure to send it with a super thank and for me to be uh, to be able to notice it and to be able to do it 100 percent to not forget about it so yeah 
when once you start giving like uh, one dollar two dollars with it so it's, i can come back to it and see it and to not forget about it so thank you guys for assisting with us and uh, i hope you enjoyed it so see you for the reaction and send me suggestions